So hello everyone. I'm Tomer Heimoff. We're going to present to you today the Phishing V3, which is the latest version of the Phishing Pack. I'm a security architect within the XOR team. And today I'm going to present with Ido, my teammate. Ido, you can present yourself. Uh, hello everyone, I'm uh, Ido. I am also from the security architecture team. I've been working closely with Tomer together uh, on uh, the phishing use case in XOR for the past uh, year. Tomer, you can uh, start. Thanks Ido. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? The first thing would be general overview of the phishing pack. What does the phishing pack includes? We're going to do an overview of the main playbook, Phishing Generic V3. Other improvements and bug fixes that were introduced in the V3, among them would be a brand new layout for the phishing incident type. Ido would go over it later on this session. Another thing would be support for ingesting phishing alerts. I'm going to talk about it a little bit down the road. And I'm going to show you some of the playbooks, some of the automations that were introduced in this version. At the end, we're going to have a Q&A session. Please, if you have any questions during this session, please make sure you're asking them in the Q&A session at the bottom of your screen, not in the chat. We will try to answer all of your questions uh, during the Q&A session, but if we were unable for some reason to answer all of the questions, the unanswered questions will be um, with the answers in our live community. We're going to post our uh, your, in the URL to the live community in the chat. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is why do we even want to use the phishing pack? So the phishing pack helps us to respond to phishing, incident, uh, to phishing incidents with a fast and automated way, both to phishing reports and alerts. And when I say reports, I mean that people on your organizations, users, employees, are reporting to a listener mailbox. We're currently supporting out of the box, the Gmail, AWS, both V2 and 0365. Sorry about that. Um, so the reports are reports that's coming from users or employees to a listener mailbox. Uh, we're supporting out of the box Gmail, AWS, both V2 and or 365 and also Microsoft Graph, which is a new integration we're supporting in the phishing pack. And when I say alerts, I mean incidents that are being created um, based on security events from evil gateways. So this is a new pack um, which were introduced a few months ago. And we're currently supporting their uh, proof point, FireEye and MindQuest. We're going to talk about it a little bit later on. The second thing would be an easy management of phishing campaigns. So phishing campaigns can be detected using machine learning and aggregated indicators, insights, like who, invest, who is investigating the incidents in the campaign and how severe they are. Uh, Ido will present this uh, as well later on this session. Another thing is that you can easily con you can configure easily everything in the uh, playbook in the main playbook. So, using playbook input, you can decide what would be the flow of the playbook. The, the playbook is built out of several sections, and it will present this as well. You can decide whether to manually um, manually respond to each incident or uh, automatically, um, you can decide whether uh, sections which can be potential harmful actions, whether to delete malicious emails, block indicators, etc., et will be run or not. The another thing would be that we have two versions for the playbooks in the phishing pack. One would be the core, which basically made for normal users, and the other is advanced for advanced users. Today, we, we're going to present you the playbook for uh, the phishing generic V3, which is the advanced one, it's not the core one. And the last thing is that our pack is the most 
the phishing pack is the most adopted use case and it's constantly being updated. Uh, we've been working a lot uh, on the last year in the past year to uh, get feedback both from our customers and from internal teams in Palo Alto networks, research groups in order to um, give you the best content we can. Um, and we are constantly updating it. So it's, uh, it's good to have the, uh, the pack updated all the time. So we have some complementary packs that in order to utilize the phishing pack uh, at the best way, it's uh, better to install them. So the first would be phishing campaigns, as I said, uh, Ido will present it later on. Phishing URL, it's a very useful pack, which allows you to detect URLs representing phishing sites by using multiple, multiple techniques. I will present some of the capabilities later as well. The machine learning pack, it helps managing machine learning models. So if you wanna make sure you are leveraging the power of your machine learning models, you can use this pack. And the last one will be phishing alerts. It's another way to ingest incidents. We will discuss about this later as well. Ido, you can take it from here. Thank you very much, Tomer. Uh, I will share my screen. So let's take a minute to understand how to even get started with phishing for those of you who are not yet using phishing in XOR. Getting started is not difficult. Um, the most important thing you would need is obviously an email listener. It could be Gmail, um, AWS, or Microsoft Graph, as Tomer mentioned. Uh, and the other way to ingest uh, those uh, incidents are alerts uh, coming from email gateway uh, security integrations. Now, um, the way that those incidents are generated is um, there is either an alert or a report that uh, was sent to a phishing inbox that you have configured in the integration. And the, that email produces an incident in XOR. The incident in XOR uh, runs the phishing playbook, which uh, as of now, the newest one is phishing generic v3. It's the third biggest iteration that we have done to the playbook uh, and to the pack as a whole. And um, when we worked on this uh, latest uh, edition, we thought of uh, what would be the best way to create a good uh, response for phishing incident, to actually create the best response we can. And we came up with a couple of sections, which you see on the screen. Um, so we start um, with the triage part. Uh, where we collect our data and pass our data. Then we enrich our data, uh, utilizing machine learning as well. Then we investigate the incident, uh, doing a deeper analysis, some custom checks, uh, specifically for phishing. And then we can reach a verdict on whether the email was malicious or not. Um, and according to the verdict, we perform remediation. Now we came up, uh, with this playbook and all the changes after doing a wide research with uh, research teams in Palo Alto Networks, uh, specifically Unit 42 for those who know them, and uh, with the UI and UX teams, uh, and also we met with customers to hear feedback. Now let me show you how those sections look uh, in the playbook itself. So I shared the playbook. Now, the phishing playbook uh, is a big playbook. Uh, it could be scary to some users, but actually it's not that difficult to understand. And there is no need to dig deep into every single task in this playbook. There are lots of sub playbooks involved and we support a wide range of integrations. Um, but how do we even get started with the playbook? So first of all, um, we go to the playbook trigger task and we can see all the inputs of the playbook. We use the playbook inputs, um, which we have also improved recently to allow you to uh, configure the way this playbook executes uh, in the most customizable way. So using the inputs, you can decide on what exactly is going to happen in the playbook, what's going to run and what's not going to run and which integrations you're going to use in some cases. So for example, if you want to search and delete emails, you simply change the input to true. If you want to block malicious indicators, you change that to true as well. You can also choose whether you want to uh, 
do an authenticity check for the email based on SPF, DKIM, and DMARC checks. Uh, so there are lots and lots of inputs you can configure here, and it's very. Uh, and we recommend that you go over them to uh, to decide exactly uh, what you want to do with the playbook. Now let's go over the sections quickly that we talked about before. So we start out the playbook by uh, engaging with the user. So we tell the user um, that the, we received the incident, um, that they don't have to take any further steps and that we are investigating the incident. Uh, and we start the triage part that we talked about earlier. So what happens here? Uh, the most important thing is we process the email. So if the email was, um, whether the email was just uh, forwarded to us and we went to the user's inbox and retrieved the email file or whether the email file was uh, attached to begin with, um, we do extractions on the email. We extract important artifacts from the email. We extract um, indicators from the email body like URLs. We extract the addresses, who the email was sent to and from. We extract the headers. We also extract uh, email attach attachments. So if the, any attachments were attached to the email like PDF files or executables or HTML files, we extract them as well. So we extract all of this data. And then we also have extract indicators from file where we extract more indicators from file attachments that were attached to the email itself. So if there was a PDF file, um, all of the indicators within the PDF file would be extracted here. We also detonate files uh, using various sandbox integrations. Um, so we, uh, we detonate those files in sandbox integrations, we get the reports and so on. And we also support detonating URL. In addition to that, we also have some machine learning checks. Um, given that you are uh, using your own uh, pre-trained phishing model and that you installed the machine learning pack, you can also try and predict uh, what kind of phishing uh, this email was, if it was spam email, if it was a malicious email. Uh, you can also try and predict um, URLs for being phishing URLs. Tomer will elaborate on that later. Um, so then we have all of the indicators, we extracted all the information we need, uh, and then we can start enriching. So we perform enrichment for all of the indicator entities, AKA indicator types. Uh, we enrich them using uh, various threat intelligence integrations. We do things like uh, SSL verifications for URLs. Uh, we check for domain squatting and more. After the enrichment part, we have a lot, a lot of uh, information and we can start doing a deeper investigation. So we, uh, we authenticate the email by looking at uh, some headers, uh, which we uh, mentioned earlier. We check if the main squatting technique was used. So if the attacker was trying to mislead the victim that they're coming from a specific domain, which they're not coming from. Um, we also check for Microsoft specific headers. Uh, it's a new addition in this playbook. And we have uh, searching for email campaigns. Email campaigns are a group of phishing incidents that are textually similar to each other. That textual similarity is checked by machine learning scripts uh, using Levenstein's algorithm. Uh, it's been very, very successful so far in detecting campaigns uh, for us and for customers. Um, and in order to use that, all you have to do is install the phishing campaign pack. Uh, if you don't, uh, then we won't search for campaigns. And campaigns are a big part of phishing. Uh, so we really recommend that you install the phishing campaign pack as well. Now, if you have your own custom phishing playbook, you can also install the phishing campaign pack and just drag and drop this sub playbook. Uh, to detect and manage phishing campaigns. After we have uh, completed our uh, deeper investigation part, we get to the calculate severity part. This is where uh, we calculate the severity for the incident. So based on the various factors, uh, including reputations of different indicators and the authenticity of the email and so on, we calculate uh, the final severity. Now. Depending on the severity, we say, is the email malicious? 
if the email is not malicious, we let the analysts decide for themselves whether it was really benign or malicious because we, want, we don't want to take any risks. If the email uh, was malicious, uh, then we update the user, of course, and we go to the remediation part. The remediation part is where we, uh, of course, it's configurable. Uh, we block malicious indicators using various integrations. Um, we allow searching and deleting the emails from the user's inbox or many inboxes, depending on your configuration, of course. And we allow uh, the analyst to take manual remediation steps. Now for the next part, we'll be looking at the new layout. The new layout, um, so we've been working a lot on the phishing pack and we have added things to the layout, but we never really looked at the layout as a whole and made changes there. And we realized that we should. Uh, so we have collaborated with customers and UX team and uh, we have been working really hard to create a new layout for phishing. Um, our main goal was to let the user understand very quickly what's happening. And we have reorganized sections. We have removed the unnecessary information and we've added more information. So I'll show you what the layout looks like. So this is the new layout. Um, so first of all, uh, you can already see that uh, the case info tab has been completely changed. The case info tab now contains actual information about the, the email, as well as some key information about the incident. So we can see, uh, first of all, the severity, which is important because this would tell us whether the email was really um, malicious or not. Uh, so what are we doing this whole uh, automation for? We want to get the verdict as quickly as possible. Uh, we can see who is working on this incident. <clears throat> and then we added the email origin. So the email origin uh, field tells us whether uh, the user forwarded the email uh, and we weren't able to retrieve it, or they forwarded the email and we were able to retrieve the e EML or MSG file, or the user attached the file to begin with. Uh, so in this case, the user reported the email and attached the email as a file. Uh, additionally, we realized there was some confusion um, as to who made the report about the email and who the email is all about. So we created the reporter field and the reported fields. Now, the reporter field is the person who made the report, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the person who received the original phishing email, uh, which would be the reported email too. Uh, the reported email to is who received the email and the reported email from is where it came from, which would be the attacker. Now, additionally, up here, we have a section that shows um, an image of the, of the email, what the email looked like to the user who received it. Uh, on the right side, we have URL screenshots of any URLs involved in this incident. They could come from the email body, they could come from attachments. Uh, then uh, we added the indicators section. We put a big section with all the indicators to make it easy to understand whether there were any malicious indicators involved. So we can see a suspicious domain here, a suspicious URL, and we can sort them by uh, the different columns. So you can sort them by the type, by the verdict and more. On the right side, uh, we added the email attachment section. That's where you can download um, the email file uh, to look at it yourself. Then we have a section saying uh, whether this incident was part of a campaign. Uh, we will cover an incident uh, which was part of a campaign later on. This one wasn't. We have the work plan allowing you to see if you need to take any manual steps here. For example, here we need to manually remediate the incident because this email was suspicious. And then we scroll down. We have improved the email body to display properly HTML formatted emails as well. So this email was HTML formatted and we can see it exactly like the user site um, down here in a big section. And on the right side, we've added a new a brand new section to uh, take response uh, from within the layout. Uh, now you can easily delete the email from the user's inbox with the click of a button. So you can see that uh, if you want to delete the email from uh, this recipient, you can see the message ID and you can decide on the delete delete type, uh, uh, soft or hard delete, 
how the leak is uh, unrecoverable. Um, some integrations support that. And then you can choose which integration you want to use um, to perform the delete action. So this field is special. It looks, uh, it's actually, um, there is a field display script here, which looks at the integrations you have enabled and checks whether they support deleting emails. And if you have them enabled and they support deleting emails, they would be displayed here. Uh, once you click delete email, you would see the results down here. So if it was, uh, if it failed for any kind of reason, permissions or whatever it may be, you would see the reason uh, right below. And then we have the e uh, incident file section. That's uh, all the incident files that were, all the files that were involved in this incident. It could be the EML file itself. It could be a PDF file inside the EML. It could be images that were extracted. All of those files would be down here. Now we added another tab uh, where you can uh, do the more advanced investigation, let's call it. Uh, we have a big section showing you the email headers in a nice view. And then we also have a header analysis section where we do some of the work for you. Uh, we show you whether the email passed the authenticity check. So you don't have to go scroll through this and see whether the SPF failed. You would already see the results uh, here. And then also you can see that the, this email received the phishing SCL score of six. SCL is a Microsoft term for a spam email. So according to the Microsoft headers, this email received a score of six, which made it a spam email. And you, we can see when we scroll down that the email, uh, email classification was really classified as spam. And the phishing, uh, the, the type was uh, automatically set. There's also a domain squatting check. We will cover that later because this email was, uh, there was no use of domain squatting here. And then we have machine learning sections. Um, so we used our own uh, train model here and it's predicted that the email was non-malicious, which is uh, correct because we know this email is spam. Uh, and we see that it pre predicted it with a high probability. Now for prediction of URLs, uh, we did not run that. So there's nothing here, but Tomer will cover it later. And then we can see the raw email HTML. If you want to dig into the HTML and find uh, something specific in the HTML of the email itself. Now uh, for the next slide, it would be Tomer. I'll give it back to you. Thank you, Ido. So, this is the list of the recent improvements, uh, which came in v uh, 3 and some bug fixes. So the first thing, two things would be um, extracting indicators directly from uh, field chains, incident field chains, and also when an, in, when an incident is being created. So once an incident is being created, inside the phishing incident type, we've decided on several incident fields, which the indicators would be extracted, extracted automatically. We are also now retrieving the EML files themselves. So in, in case the employee or the user has forwarded the email and didn't attach the EML or the MSG file, we, we will be able to retrieve the EML file itself, which helps us to analyze the phishing email in a better uh, way. We also added the URL detonation section. And as we said, we try to, cust to uh, allow you to customize the playbook. So we added a, your, um, a playbook input to control whether to run this section or not. Uh, one bug fix that uh, was um, introduced in, in certain cases that the headers weren't displayed correctly in the layout, so we fixed it. There are some new playbooks inputs um, in order to support the newly added additions. The default playbook has been changed for the phishing incident. So now the default playbook is phishing generic v3, the main playbook that Ido just showed you. And we also added a section for the debug predictor of phishing, which I'm going to present to you later. So some new and some new versions of playbooks. Um, so most of the playbooks were uh, bumped with a new version in order to support the uh, bug fixes and the uh, new features we've added. Uh, there are some new 
playbooks as well. For example, search and delete uh, Gmail. Uh, we didn't have an option to search email and delete them using Gmail. Now we have this option. And also fetching the original email with the Microsoft Graph mail integration. We had a lot of uh, requests from customers uh, for both of these uh, playbooks and we released them in the latest um, version. Ido, back to you. Thank you, Tomer. Um, I will share my screen again. Uh, I promised you domain squatting. So domain squatting has been something that we've been checking for uh, already in the previous phishing versions, but we uh, really never gave it much attention. And uh, we think it's an important part of phishing. And we found that there were some bugs with the script and we received um, um, customer feedback. So we uh, took a look at the script. Uh, we gave it to the development team to make some fixes. And then we said, why not display it to the user in the layout as well? So as part of the layout changes, we also display uh, the result of the domain squatting check. So uh, in this um, image uh, that you see, you can see that the attacker used a certain domain, which looks like another domain involved in this incident. Uh, you can also see the, um, on the left side that um, the from header um, shows you that the um, person who sent this email and was using domain squatting uh, was changed to have a suspicious reputation uh, due to the domain squatting um, technique. Now for the campaign. Let's share a campaign incident. Okay, so now this is an incident uh, which was uh, found to be part of a campaign. Uh, if we look here, we can see it says this incident is part of a phishing campaign, and this is a link to the campaign that the incident belongs to. If we click on it, we will be taken um, to the uh, phishing campaign incident. That's a separate incident. Uh, when a phishing campaign is detected, uh, a new incident is created for the campaign. If there are other phishing incidents coming after that, after it has already been opened, uh, we will find the relevant campaign and we will link it to the relevant campaign. Uh, so no need to worry about that. Now, phishing campaigns are also a big part of phishing because uh, they happen all the time uh, and they're dangerous and we need a good way to uh, manage them and, and to get a good overview about them. So this is what the phishing campaign is for. This is the layout we provide out of the box. You can see key information about the phishing incidents like the similarity range. So how similar the incidents were to each other. The 10 incidents in this campaign were 97% to 100% similar, which means they were very similar to each other. They are definitely part of the same campaign. The similarity range can also be configured. This is a threshold uh, configured from the playbook input. Uh, we can see information like who the recipients were and who the senders were. Uh, there could be one sender, there could be many senders. We can see how many incidents uh, were from each uh, of the senders. We can see what was the highest severity of the incidents that make up this campaign. So the highest severity was medium. Um, you can also see a snippet of uh, the email that uh, this campaign is all about, how long the campaign has been running for, and mutual indicators, uh, which is something I really like because uh, this is hugely beneficial because uh, you wouldn't want to go in and look at every single phishing incident and look at the indicators in that incident. You want to look at it as a campaign. And in this section, you can see uh, an aggregation of all the indicators from all the phishing incidents belonging to this campaign. So you can see this suspicious domain was um, involved in 10 incidents, which is all of the incidents of this campaign. Now, something else we added is the incident owners. So you don't wanna have uh, different people investigating different phishing incidents, which are part of the same campaign. It doesn't make sense. So you can see uh, how, who is investigating those incidents. Here we can see that two people are investigating them. What if I want to investigate the incident uh, by myself? I don't need someone else investigating a separate incident of the same campaign. Then I go to the campaign management tab. In the campaign management tab, I can select um, the incidents based on their IDs, or I can select all of the incidents. 
And then once I select them, I can take ownership. Taking ownership means that I'll be the one assigned to all of the incidents uh, that belong to this campaign, including the campaign itself. I can also close them and link them and do other actions. Uh, I can see the incidents themselves here and there are links to them uh, by clicking on the IDs. And then I can also engage with the recipients uh, of those campaigns. I can uh, choose the incidents from the campaign and after I choose them, the, um, the campaign email to field would be populated according to those incidents. And I can write a subject in body and send an email from the layout to everyone who received the campaign. Um, that would be it for the campaigns. Tomer, I will pass it back to you. Thank you, Ido. Um, so another improvement was changing email labels to incident fields within the playbook. So before we change that, you can take a look at the left side of the uh, screen. We use incident labels in order to get data from the incident, which basically created some issues when we wanted to add more and more integrations. So we changed those into incident fields that basically generalize the playbook and assist us with adding new integrations such as Microsoft Graph. And basically it will help you to add, if you like, more integrations into the phishing playbook. As for phishing alerts. So as we showed you before, this is another pack for ingesting phishing incidents. So in case you are using phishing alerts in, in order to ingest incidents, the sub playbook called process emails generic V2 is now support this scenario as well. We added a new path within this playbook. Um, the phishing alert is currently supporting Mimecast, FireEye and Proofpoint. And you can read all about this pack in our website. There is, there is a ton of documentation on it. The changes we made for the Get Original Email uh, playbooks. So first of all, we created a new playbook called Microsoft Graph Mail. As I said earlier, you can now retrieve emails using the Microsoft Graph Mail integration. Also for Gmail, we created a V2, which now uses the message ID directly. And also for AWS V2, um, we are now using the message ID directly. Uh, this actually helped to improve the performance of the playbook because it uses less searches on the user's mailboxes in order to retrieve the email. So this is a, a unique ID which helps us to retrieve the email. In the AWS V2 Get Original Email Playbook, we added a new section, a new path for AWS O365 integration. So now this integration is being supported as well in order to retrieve emails. And as I said earlier, we are now retrieving the email files instead of email objects. <clears throat> Let's talk about a little bit about a new addition that Zbot predict URL phishing. This automation, which located within the phishing URL pack, helps you to predict phishing URL using a pre-trained model. Basically, what it does, it does several checks and with uh, using several techniques in order to um, to understand whether a URL represents a phishing site or not. So for example, one of the checks will be who is check? How old is this domain? Whether the URL contain an IP or a special port, whether the site shows a logo of a known company or your company, but the domain is not the domain of this company, whether the site has a sign in page, what is the search engine optimization status of this, of this URL? Um, it uses Dbot score for the results. So you can see the score of this automation in the, indica in the indicators themselves. And also it will wait once you're checking URLs with, the, the, with this automation, it will wait. The default is five seconds until all of the redirections are done. So 
a very common phishing technique is to provide one URL and when the user clicks on it, it he will, uh, the user will be redirected sometimes several times um, until he will get landed on the phishing site itself. And it also supports JavaScript based redirections and not only 300 status redirections. Let me show you how this script looks, how the script results looks within an investigation. So first of all, this is a, a, an incident um, where the user got an email. Please log into your LinkedIn account in order to see the message, a classic phishing. And as you can see, it looks like a LinkedIn. The image here um, represents the LinkedIn site. There is a login page here. But if you go to the results of this automation, we can see several things here. First of all, we can see that there was a login form, which is suspicious. Also, the search engine, the search engine optimization is bad. There is a usage of a company logo. This is also raising the suspiciousness, the suspiciousness level and the maliciousness. Um, so the overall score of this URL was almost one, which is very, very high. And this automation also provides a screenshot. And if there was a use of a, com of a company logo, uh, it will show you the logo that it was detected. Another automation within the phishing URL pack is the update logo URL phishing. So you're probably wondering, okay, I have my own logo. I want to add my own logo or my employees getting uh, uh, phishing URLs for other companies that aren't currently predefined in the system. So how can I edit? Let's start by running the debot update logo URL phishing automation. So the first thing I want to see is which logos are currently being supported. So on my system, these are the logos that will be identified in case of a site which, which presents them. I added the DHL one and the Palo Alto Networks one. All of the others are predefined. You can also see, let me just zoom in a little bit. You can also see which domain for custom logos is being predefined. Okay, now let's say that I want to remove the DHA logo. So I would use the same automation, but the action would be remove logo. I can remove it by its name. So I know the name is DHL. It was removed successfully. Let's make sure we can tell the script to show us the logos again. Now it was removed. Now, maybe let's add this logo again. So all I need to do is drag and drop to the incident or to the playground an image file of the logo. So I just drag and drop the DHL PNG file. I upload it. Once it's uploaded, I can take a look at the entry ID of the file. I will copy it. And when I'm using the same automation again, I will now choose the add logo action. I can provide the logo image ID, which is the entry ID I just copied. The associated domains, so it's a comma separated list. You can provide several domains. For this example, I will provide one. And the logo name, you can choose which name you provide to this logo. I hit enter. And it says it was added successfully. Let's check. And it was. So in case your employees will get a phishing site which shows the DHL logo, but doesn't have this domain, it will be triggered as malicious. 
Another major thing we've added, I know Ido was working on it a lot uh, since a lot of customers were uh, asking about it, is manual phishing incident creation. So for example, let's say the uh, analyst in the SOC is getting a phone call or is getting a text message from some of the one of the employees, maybe it can be the CEO, whatever, and they can't send the phishing email uh, for some reason. They want the, that the SOC analyst would uh, get the, the phishing email and would raise the incident by, by themselves. So now the SOC analyst can do it. This is just one example of why we should use the manual phishing incident. Let me show you how you, it can be done. So we go to the incidents page, create new incident. Over here, you can choose the phishing type and the creation of a new incident layout will be changed. You need to give it a name, let's call it test. You can provide the reporter email address who reported it. This user will be um, contacted when the playbook uh, is running. You don't have to put it. Then you can choose an attachment. So let me, drag and drop some EML file. It can be EML or MSG. You can add your comment here if you like. Upload, and that's it. You can create your new incident. Once this the incident is created, you can start investigating it, and the playbook would run and would parse this EML file and would provide all of the relevant information. You can see that the indicators are being populated. You can see that the email, the email attachment is here. This is just a test email uh, that I created, but you can go also to the investigation tab and take a look at the headers that were being extracted and all of the other relevant information. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this session. Um, this is your time for uh, asking your questions. Uh, Ido and I are going to go over your uh, uh, your, question, your questions in the Q&A, um, we answered, I can see that we've answered 23 questions. There are some here that we didn't answer. We will do our best to answer all of the questions. Some of the questions will be answered later and the answer will be posted in our live community. Let's see. Ido, you can feel free to join me as well. Yes, of course. Uh, so regarding Roger's question, the bot update logo URL phishing uh, is not on their XOR. How do I get it? You have to install the phishing uh, uh, phishing URL pack. That's where the, that uh, script is, is stored. Yes, I'm writing this answer here as well. Yeah, so regarding documentation answer uh, questions, um, we'll make sure to share relevant documentations uh, for questions later on in our live community. Um, um, you can also you can also um, go to the PEC readme file or just um, go to the let me maybe share it real quick. So if you have the phishing installed you can click here and you can read for those who didn't read it what this pack exactly is doing um, I also saw that there were some questions regarding permissions that are needed so permissions are needed for uh, for certain actions like deleting emails uh, searching emails fetching emails etc uh, each integration uh, has its own permission required um, I believe that in the relevant get original email playbooks, the specific permissions are um, being documented there, but uh, we'll make sure to document that as well uh, for your questions. So where are the custom logos stored? Uh, I'm not sure exactly where the logos are stored. 
I can check that and I will answer that uh, in the live community. But I know that um, the automation itself is predefined with uh, relevant domains and relevant companies that are common uh, for phishing use cases like uh, uh, Facebook, PayPal, etc. And for how does the URL prediction reach out to the potentially malicious URL without leaving artifacts that will be traced back to our environment? Um, so, you know, it's like a, the chicken and egg question. In order to retrieve how the phishing sites look, you're going to have to contact it, right? And since our environment based on Docker containers, and there are isolated Docker containers, and there is also documentation on how to um, make this a more locked environment. Um, this is the way to retrieve this URL from within the Docker environment. Um, so there's, uh, so Vargas asked, um, what does the phishing URL ML command needs to be used? So I, I think that, um, so he's uh, asking, um, like why should we, uh, where, where it should be used. Um, so, so the commands that uh, Thomas showed you to, um, to add or remove logos, uh, you can do them from the playground or from within an existing question. Uh, and if so, if you were referring to the prediction part to predict whether the email was malicious or not, um, then that happens in the playbook, uh, in the phishing, uh, phishing uh, in the machine learning track, sorry. Um, Herman asked for the documentation link. So uh, I believe the, the pan dev um, portal is, should be uh, in the resources section. Uh, and if not, then we would send that in the chat. Absolutely. And for those uh, who ask questions here, which we didn't answer, we'll make sure to answer it in the in our live community. So I think that, that that's it. Um, you know, do, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, nothing in particular. Um, I see that uh, many people are looking for documentation pages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we will make sure to go over these questions and to cover the, the, the relevant documentation later on yeah uh, yeah and herman i see that you're saying uh you don't see a documentation for the domain squatting um it's a script uh it's not separate pack or anything um it's a common script um there should be documentation about that uh it should be straightforward to use and if there if there isn't then we will also look into that yes so with that said i want to thank everyone who participated in this webinar i hope you enjoyed it